We're here with some lovely, lovely ladies. The Monster Motivator is excited about tonight and some of the stories that you guys are going to share with us. You guys. So let me make sure that we are live on the Monster Motivator Facebook, guys, so we can bring them in. Hold on one second. Let's see. And if they're not, they're going to be right here. If this comes up, yeah. Okay, we are live on the Dave Daly um, Facebook. Can you guys see yourselves? Yeah. All right. All right. So we're gonna have people jump on. They might comment. They might ask questions. But let's get this thing started. So we have Miss Hemet. Yes, I'm Miss Hemet Kelsey Bohannon. Miss Hemet, Kelsey, so, so is that Miss Hemet 2016? 2017. 2017, congratulations. Thank you. All right. Who I'm Miss Team Hemet, and I'm Jocelyn Schlater. Miss Team Hemet. And who's I, this beautiful young lady? I am, uh, uh, I'm with the cops. I help, I have a best team at the girl. At a girl, at a girl, knuckle it up, at a girl. Who do we have over to the left? I'm Dominique Hernandez, and I'm your Miss San Jacinto 2017. 2017? And I'm Miss Team San Jacinto, Hillary Miles. All right, all right. Ladies, you know what it's, you know what it, you know what we say in my position? It stinks, but somebody has to do this. <laughs> right? So I know that um, I know that we're here because you guys you guys support a foundation, a, a certain foundation. You guys do it together or do you do it separately? We just support our community and we just go out to community events, whether it's just going out to be there to just support the foundation or whatever it is, or okay. going to actually do community service. Okay, now have you have you been in different um, uh, pageants before? I was actually Miss Team Hemet in 2015. All right, I all loved right. the program so much that I decided that I wanted to run for Miss Hemet. Awesome, awesome. I actually have competed in other foundations, the Miss America organization. But the actual Miss America? Yeah. Okay. And cool. they kind of have like subcategories within each state. Okay. So there's Miss California and then there's divisions throughout the state. And I competed for Miss Inland Empire and I didn't win. That's all right. I am Miss San Jacinto now. So. That's all right. You won, you won 2017 yes. and this is your hometown? Mm -hmm. Awesome. Now, have you, first time? Yeah. Have you won? Yep. Wow. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. I ran twice. You and did? I won this year. Okay. All right. What did you learn the first time that you ran and you didn't win? What did you learn? That just have confidence, confidence in myself and to, if I really wanted it, just keep pushing. Okay. Uh, did you did you, did you you kind of change anything to that you learned from the first time? I changed my attitude, kind of. I got really, I was disappointed that I didn't win, but I learned that it's okay to sometimes lose, okay. just to strive for something bigger. Okay, so it's, it's really, you know, you, a lot of times what I like to say is, is you either win or you learn. Yeah. So that'd be, that'd be pretty accurate? Yeah. Awesome, awesome. So um, you won the junior the yeah. first time? The Miss Team, yeah. The Miss Team, mm -hmm. first time. Mm -hmm. Then you won what you have now the first time. Yes. Sir. All right. All right. There you go. That there's nothing wrong with that. And what did you learn in the in the Miss um, America? You know, I think I also ran for this pageant quite a few times oh. before I won. Yeah, this is my third time competing. Okay. And I officially have the title, but I think from each pageant that I've been in and participated in, it's been an experience that I've grew from. It's been a chance for me to learn about myself and to grow more confidence and to know that each of us are capable of being a bigger part of our community. So when you when you didn't win the first few times, um, how did that make you feel? You know, I think of course it's gonna like beat you down, but a, a little disappointed, right? Yeah, but if you take that and you use it to empower yourself to keep going and to keep striving for your dreams and for your goals, then to where you want to go. Okay, because that's the thing that I think that's really what we want to share, right, is is look, if you if you don't get what you thought you were going to get the first time around, mm -hmm. you always have choices, right? Life gives you choices. Yeah. You can either quit, walk away, right, or 
keep going if it's important to you. And I always tie a lot of things into life with your why. You know, I always say when your why is big enough, it's going to pull you through. What do you think your why was to keep you going? For me, yeah. it's I had a hard life growing up. Okay. And I wanted to be the support that someone else can use as their anchor or their person that they look up to to see if she can get through whatever she's been through in her life. Love it. I so love it. Anyone can do I that. love that. You know why? Because this is what Monster Motivator TV is all about. I tell people all the time that are terrified to come in in front of the camera and share their story, that their story is not about them. Their story, you're, once you made it through, that means you were tough enough to make it through. Now it's your obligation to share that story. And yeah. you are living proof of that. How old are you? I'm 21. That, 22. That girl. I love it. I love it. I love it. That's, it's awesome. And that's what it's about. We want to bring those rocky stories on. Now, I'm from Philly, so it kind of it goes hand in hand, right? I'm a, <laughs> I'm a little biased, but um, but I love that because you, you didn't come from what we call from the East Coast. You had a rough paper route, so did I, right? Yeah. But it doesn't mean, um, it actually, a lot of times it means that struggle equals strength. Mm -hmm. So when you persevere, it actually, you become that better person on the other side of that. So that that's awesome. That is awesome. So share a little bit of your story. Um, I decided to run for Miss Teen Science Center this year because I had a spinal fusion this summer, oh, wow. this previous summer, and I just wanted to motivate the girls out there that, like, despite disabilities or, like, physical things that you're insecure yeah. about, you can do anything. Like, you wow. can achieve whatever you want to do. So when did you have that happen? With I was diagnosed with scoliosis in okay. sixth grade, and I was braced for four years. And my curve just kept progressing, and I was starting to get shorter, and yeah. just, like, I didn't look right, and I was really just in the dumps, kind of. I just yeah. didn't feel good about myself. And so then my doctor told me the summer of my sophomore year, like, I need surgery because my lungs are being compressed. So then I had an eight-hour spinal fusion, and it was rough. It was really rough, but I told myself, I'm going to do this pageant, and I'm going to do it. So that was your driver. That was kind of your, like your carrot that you were chasing. So, so this pageant actually kept your, your mind focused on something. Yeah. versus, uh, and, and, and to me it sounds more like it. the pageant was a big part of, you know, again, life gives us those choices, right? You could be a victim or you could be a victor. And, I, and it sounds like the pageant had a lot to do with you getting back up yeah. and keeping, keep moving forward. How old are you? I'm 16. And that's, that's, that is awesome stuff. And see, for me personally, it's what I love about this show. It's why I became my oxygen. You just never know what stories are going to come out. You just never know, like, the inspiration. And you're talking about a 16-year-old girl here. Now, I'm talking to everyone out there. A 16-year-old girl that had to, that figured it out, the difference between a victim and a victor, and that's that's awesome. Kudos. Kudos big time. That's, that's and we call that monster mode. <laughs> awesome job. Awesome job. So share a little bit of your story. What's, uh, you know, where you're from and, and how you got here. I always been a part of the community because my brother has been a Boy Scout since I was four years old. And okay. I've gone to every one of their functions. I've always, I've done Girl Scouts and I have over a thousand hours of community service. Wow. And I just, I love helping out in my community. I love doing things to help other people. And so. How does that make you feel? It makes me feel really great. It does? Yeah. Yeah. I love helping people. And this pageant was just such a great opportunity to get out more into the community and being able to be part of it and take part more into my community has been just a wonderful experience. And just a great feeling. Because, you know, yeah. a lot of people always ask in, in my industry, you know, what's the definition of, of happiness and what's the definition of success? And I always say the definition of success is really living life on your terms, whatever that is. And the definition of happiness is fulfillment. Mm -hmm. And when you when you find that, um, I mean, that, that that's the ultimate definition of happiness. Would you... Do you agree? Definitely. Yeah? Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. John, how old are you? I'm 18. I just turned 18. That's Saturday. awesome. Uh, you know, and, and I, I want to put it out there that um, anybody that's that's watching this, that has kids, parents, or kids that are watching, reach out to these girls because after we get done the show, we're going to reshare this. And you guys are going to be able to reconnect with everyone on Facebook. So that would be an awesome thing because these are some real powerful stories that, that people need to hear. Um, so they can connect, and, and I'm a big fan of, um, we don't want, uh, life 
again, makes the rules, right? Life always gives you options. And the other thing that life says, and I love what you guys are bringing to the table, is life doesn't want to hear you cry, moan, and, and, and give it, uh, excuses, because life pretty much says, we don't care, what are you going to do about it? And that's what you guys bring to the table uh, with your stories, and I love that, you know? So they're, they're tired of hearing me say it, so now I have a 16-year-old beautiful girl saying it, I can just step back, I mean, it's awesome. So, share your story. Um, well, I'm from Hemet, okay. and I go to Hemet High, and I'm on a water polo team, and right. I'm captain of the JV team. Okay. And then I ran for Miss Teen Hemet two years, like I said, because okay. I really wanted to get out in my community and do something. Okay. And Sorry. I just really wanted to show girls that can look up to me that I'm a good role model and I always strive for my best. Yeah, and you know one of the other things too, because, you know, doing what you guys are doing, you have to be on stage, you have to be out there, you know, you have to be in front of the camera and you have to get more and more comfortable with that. So one of the things that I want to make sure that people understand is even boys, right, that aren't... Uh, don't have a lot of inner confidence. They feel shy. I want them to be able to look at you girls and say, you know what? If they can do it, I can do it in whatever I do want to do. So if, if there's little boys out there, young young guys out there that are looking at you saying, how did you how did you get the courage to get on stage? How did you get the courage to get in front of the camera? How did you get the courage to share your story? What would you say? I would just say just believe in yourself okay. because... It all starts with believing in yourself, okay. and then you could take it to the next level and have people believe in you, but it all starts with yourself. Okay, and how important do you think it is to have the right people around you? It's very important just yeah. for support, yeah. and it's better to have people supporting you than knocking you down, and with supporters, they will always lift you up and you'll reach higher things. Okay, and I know we have a bunch of moms here, right, <laughs> and, and, and that's, that's a very important point that I want to get across uh, because I had uh, about a month and a half ago I had a 12 year old little girl on the show and a 14 year old boy and they were brother and sister and the 12 year old has a business a cleaning business for two years now and has 50 clients customers and she, her cousins do the cleaning for her right she <laughs> runs the show she's 12 years old and her brother has a natural juice company and his, he's 14 and his goal is to have, uh, to gross $200,000 this year um, in 2017. But I share that with you because I'm going to get their parents on the show because they're the ones that, that are supporting cash. They're the ones that are, that are out there changing their schedule, making it happen. Um, and I want to talk to you guys about that, about the support you have at home because I'm, here's where I'm going with this is their, their parents had the wherewithal to understand that their, their kids are entrepreneurs at heart. So why not support them in that direction? They don't necessarily have to go down that traditional uh, direction if that's not for them. And I think that's so important for parents to understand and to communicate with their kids because it could make a world of difference. Because for me, my story is left back in the second grade. Diagnosed with ADD, never uh, had it said I had a learning disorder, and never graduated high school. So my, my, I wasn't built for that traditional road. I didn't learn in that cookie cutter, in that cookie cutter way. But in the last 20 years, been fortunate enough to have built and sold three companies in three different industries. So I think it's important that the parents truly understand who their kids are and and where their strengths are. I'd love your your input on that. What do you what do you think? What, What's your input on that, on the supporting cast? Well, for me, my siblings are everything because my dad passed away when I was um, a sophomore in high school. And when he passed away, my siblings and I, we kind of sectioned ourselves together because it was hard. It was really hard on each of us in different ways. But we've grown so much closer to each other. We hang out all the time, like that's people think awesome. it's weird. No, but, that, that, but that's all, I know, are you the, the oldest, youngest, or in the middle? I'm in the middle. I okay. have an older sister and two younger brothers. An older sister, two younger brothers. So you and your sister kind of had to take the reins and, and almost become the parent 
Uh, yeah, well, we have my mom too, but my siblings, we are just so much closer than I could have ever imagined that we'd ever be. We literally do everything together. It's kind of weird. <laughs> well, did you, did you do it before your dad passed or, or just since your dad passed and really tightened up? Um, before he passed, we weren't as close. I think, like, we're all going through that stage where one of us was in high school, yeah. one of us was in middle school, and other ones were in elementary yeah. school. But as we've gotten older, we've kind of just, like, latched on to each other. And, and see, that's a, a, it's a great, um, thank you for sharing that, by the way, first of all. But, but secondly, again, I'm going to go back to life makes, gives you choices. And you guys could have actually just went away, went separate, and, uh, and not supported one another. Because you always had that, that choice. So, again, awesome, awesome story. I, I love that. So, um, how much support do you guys have at home from, you know, doing what you do? Oh, I have a ton. Um, I'm always busy with school because I'm taking a college class and I have theater, so I'm at my school from like 6 o'clock in the morning until 6 o'clock at night. And <laughs> right. My mom and my brother are very supportive of me. My parents got divorced when I was six, so my mom's always been there for me. She's always... The foundation. Yeah, she's yeah. taken me. She's not gone to things for her personally so that she could take me into what I wanted to go to and what I wanted and needed to do. And my brother has taken me to events and everything year and without them you know I I wouldn't be where I am now they're very supportive and they they push me to be my best yeah I mean and that's awesome and it's great that you're especially at your age that you can recognize that and give them that credit because not every you know not every kid your age could, could do that so yeah. so that that's something you need to own right that that's a great thing um, that helps your self-image um, I'm a big believer that um, the greatest gift any adult can give a child, whether it's your child or not, is a bulletproof self-image because that's the epicenter. You could build your self-image up, you could tear it down, but you cannot outperform it. When you, and when you think about that, and, and you guys um, are living proof of what a powerful self-image can do and what you're capable of doing, and this is just the beginning. That's what's so great about this. It's just it's just the start, and it's... You guys are great role models for uh, for a lot of kids out there. Um, how, how about the support at home? It's really strong. Yeah. Like my mom's always taking me places. My stepdad, my sisters, definitely my friends too. They're always very supportive. Okay. Okay. Can't leave you out. <laughs> yeah, I kind of relate to Kelsey because like my mom will take me from school. My school starts uh, normally early. It can be there around like six fifteen. So. We go there, and then I'm there until my soccer practice ends. Well, I'm not in soccer this year, but when I was in soccer, she would just take me back and forth and have to go get my sister. So she was always canceling things in her day to take me places. And plus, when I started going to practices for the pageant, because we had a practice before yeah. we actually performed, she always had to cut her schedule just to take me at, like, 7 o'clock. Yeah. Wow. So, now, how are you feeling physically? I'm in pain. Most of the time, just because they said that it's going to fix the way it looks, but not the way it feels. But it's going to fix the way it looks, not the way it feels. Like my back, it'll, it'll never feel the same as oh. other people's, but like it'll just like look straighter. Oh, that's so gotcha, gotcha. I can't play sports this year, which sucks because I was varsity soccer last year. <laughs> really? Wow. And so that kind of stunk, and I played track and I can't do it anymore. But next year I will, and I'll be a senior year, so hopefully. I'm yeah, that, that's awesome. Definitely keep us posted. Um, so, so girls, what what would you say um, for people and even adults that 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 just um, seem like they're in a funk and they seem like they can't get out of it? And they, because I have my opinion on this, and I'd love to hear your guys' opinion um, on if kids or, or adults that just can't seem to get out of their own way. And, they, they, they're really um, in a funk. What, would you, what, what advice would you give them? I would just tell them that it's not going to last forever and to just push as hard as you can because in the end you'll look back and think, wow, I did it. I pushed through that hard struggle that I thought I never would. Love that. I love that. And uh, you know, One of the things that I connect with that is um, you know, people ask me all the time you know, when I speak, uh, keynote speak, uh, talks in the corporate world, I speak on fear barriers and, and why fear barriers stop people from moving forward. So 
obviously I always get in the Q and A uh, part of it. I always get people that say, "Well, you're the big fear barrier guy. What are you afraid of?" And I say, "It's not even a second place. I'm terrified, absolutely terrified of regret, because we have this one time." Um, so I love that. I love that input. What would you say when they're t when they're saying they're in a funk? They just can't get out of it. They're not sure what to do. I would say just to push through it. Like no matter what you do, you might be doing you might be doing something one way and not think of it another way. But maybe just take a step back and reevaluate your situation. And just think this might work and try it. Like it's never going to hurt to try. So like even if you fail, it won't hurt to try. That's it. Get out there and do it. Right. Mm -hmm. Lace up the boots and get to work. Yeah. Love it. Um, I agree, of course, with both of you. But I also think that you can. Whatever you love, like whatever helps you and makes you happy, to attach yourself to that. Because for me, animals bring me so much happiness, and it's what I'm going to school for right now. I'm in my junior year at UCLA. Wow. And what do you want to do? Well, I want to go to school to be an animal welfare lawyer. Wow. Mm -hmm. Animal, the a huge part of my life, and. When I get stressed at school, I have four cats of my own, so okay. I'm pretty cat lady. <laughs> but they make me so happy. I get home, and when I'm stressed, I just hug on them, even if they don't want me to. <laughs> right. You're not happy about it. Yeah. They have no choice. I love that. You know, and that does, it maps back to figuring out what your passion is, what you love, uh, because then that puts you in a whole different energy. You know, so I, I love it. Right? It does. It puts you in a whole other perspective, which really, that's, at the end of the day, it's that simple. Life is about perception yeah. and, and how you look at it. So, when you have that person, your adult or a kid, and you're, this is going to be great feedback from you. Somebody that, that you know, kind of, uh, you know, physically, maybe they're hurting physically, right, as you were. How did you, what would you say? How would you get them out of that funk? Well, um personal experience, what I try yeah. to always do is find joy in the struggle. Okay. So whatever you're going through, just always think of like that one thing, like, wow, I have an amazing mom, or like, wow, these friends are so supportive. Like, no matter how many negative things are going on, just try to find one thing that's positive, and it's just going to lift your spirit. I love that. So it's the attitude of gratitude, yeah. and, and, and I was <laughs> taught by a mentor of mine a long time ago, and it's a lot of, like, what you're saying is if you can't find something that you're grateful for, just bring down the, uh, bring it down, right? So if you're just grateful that you have a house, if you're just grateful that you can eat tomorrow, then start from there, and then kind of take those baby steps and move up. Is that what yeah, you would say, yeah? Instead of saying, oh, I wish I had this, or I wish I had that, be like, I'm really grateful that I have this house, or I'm really yes. grateful that I have this toy. Yeah. You know, anything you have, just always don't take it for granted. Really appreciate that. Start somewhere. Mm -hmm. Start somewhere because there are so many people that would um, would would love to be in your position, no matter where you're at or, or where you are at in life. And that's just a reality. That's just a fact. Um, so we're going to start down here. Where? Um, what's your goal? What are you looking to do in the future? What's your What's your plans? Like my work plans. Mm -hmm. I want to be a doctor. Okay, what, what kind? I want to be an OBGYN. All right. All right. And, and uh, uh, what are you doing towards that? What, what's your, what, what kind of steps are you taking? Um, next year, I'm taking AP Bio, and then I'm taking some medical classes. And then I got offered a, a certificate of excellence okay. for future physicians and medical scientists wow. in uh, Boston. So wow. I'm really hoping to do that this summer. Wow, that's awesome. That's great. I would like to be a load master in the Navy. A load master in the, what is that? It's they take like they put things in the like planes and that kind of stuff yeah. and they make sure that the weight is balanced. So that like the plane doesn't isn't. Where did that come from? Weight. That is really interesting. I really love math and <laughs> I've been really good at math. Yeah. for a long time, yeah. and I've always wanted to go into the military to serve my country. Okay. So I decided that being a loadmaster would be a really fun job, and the Navy is the, the wow. branch that seems best for me, so I'm going to go to MSJC for a semester, and okay. then enlist into the Navy, and then I would like to become an officer and stay in for 20 years and then retire and become a math teacher. 
man, that's a, that's a beautiful plan. That is awesome. So you're you're going to school, right? Mm -hmm. UCLA, yeah. and then you want to end and you want to do. Well, I'm gonna finish up and get my bachelor's degree okay. in history, okay. and then I want to go to law school in Portland, Oregon, because they have one of the best um, programs for animal law okay. throughout the world. So that's where I'm gonna go and eventually be a lawyer who fights for the welfare and rights for animals. Love it. I love it. I'm a big animal guy. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, I'm a big uh, dog. Um, Dog guy, I'm a um, dog person too. You are, a cat. Cat. yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, and and I do. I, I love animals, so I get it. I get it. How about you? I want to be an educator, so like an English teacher. Okay. And steps I'm taking right now is my school offers the IB program, so it's like AP, and then IB is like just a step ahead of that. Okay. And um. So I'm taking four of the HR classes, and those are like the two-year courses. Okay. So if I pass all the final tests for that, I'll get college credit. So basically, all my general ed. I love it. And here's what here's what's interesting about every one of your stories. When I asked you that question, every one every one of you guys were very clear on on, on your steps, on your um, on your goals, on your ambitions. Now, that doesn't mean that things can't change. That doesn't mean you can't tweak things. But being clear. On, on those steps is very important and that's that's the message I want to get out there especially at your age your guys ages you know that it's um you can set those in place you can start moving forward once you get clear and you have the right people around you I think that's that's an important message that you guys actually live uh, so it's it's really it's awesome because um, it could have been real easy for you guys at your age to say I don't know I'm not sure yet you know and not one of you said that so uh, I love that. I love that. That you guys are that clear uh, on it. Um, anybody here see themselves being an entrepreneur? Um, no, so we want to do a <laughs> girl. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I like I feel um uh I'm nurse. Yeah. Nurse. All right. Thank God for nurses. Mm -hmm. We need them. That a girl. How how you doing down there? I'm good. You're doing good? Yeah. Yeah? So do you live in Hemet? Yeah. Yeah? Do you like Hemet? Yeah, I do. You do? All right. How, how's school? Do you like school? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah? All right. Yeah. That a girl. So, girls, before we wrap this up, is there anything that you guys want to add that I didn't talk about that you want to mention that, you, that you're doing or that you want to... I just really want to thank the Suburban Foundation for being a really big sponsor for our program because this program is so is great for so many young girls and I just want to give them a big thanks. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, I just thank the Suburban Foundation and just to keep inspiring girls just to let them know that just keep pushing for what you want. So are they the main sponsor and they make sure that they're the ones that are able to, you guys are able to roll this out because of that? Or? They're huge. They are? Yes, okay. Yeah. Awesome. I want to just end with saying that if you're interested in the program and if you're interested in being involved in the community, this is such a great opportunity to make awesome friendships mm -hmm. and also do something different and do something that's going to help your community and something that you can look back on when you're older and be like, wow, I really did make a difference. Yeah, and it's it's something. It's a great thing to put on that resume, you know, for yourself, even if it's not, look, per se, a business resume, but for your own your own personal yeah. resume portfolio. I love that. And again, it's it's uh, it's about it, it maps back to happiness, right? What is happiness, and that's whatever that is fulfillment for you, um, which is awesome. Um, I just like to say that my family's program is so amazing. It gives girls so much confidence in themselves. Just being able to go on stage and kind of do their thing. It's just, it, you get a lot of confidence from it and the School of Affirmation for our sponsors. You know, it's a great point. Um, I have another question. You just, you just uh, created another question for me. The first time you went on stage to now, are you different? Are you a different person? Yeah, I am very different because when I first went on stage, all I wanted to do was win. I just wanted the crown. I just wanted the title. Right. I just wanted the scholarship. Right. But now I'm more, I want to help people and I want to do something in my community and make a difference. Were, but were you naturally um, comfortable being on stage and speaking on stage? Or, or was that a transition? Was that something that you kind of 
helped you grow into? Well, I used to be in a lot of plays when I was younger. Okay. So I was kind of used to the stage, but then it also made me nervous because of all the people that were going to be yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. And just throwing, like, putting myself out there. So how did you how did you break through that, that fear? Because that's one of the biggest fears that people have is public speaking. Yeah. I just... I just put myself out there and just showed that it's okay if I fail okay. because like I did my first time, I just have to get back up and just, if you want something, go get it. Got it, girl. Love it. So the first time you're on stage to now, what's the difference in, in who you are and your confidence in yourself? In you? I feel like I definitely have more confidence and just surrounding myself in this kind of environment makes me grow for like being a better person. Okay. And it's just, it's truly a great program. And I know I keep saying that, but like it, it really helps. It, it's helped me mature. It's helped me with my confidence. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you feel it, you live it. And, mm -hmm. and, and there's no mistake. I mean, because public speaking is such a big um, fear for so many people um, because of the self image. And, and they're so concerned with what other people think. And, and you know, I speak on fears and we could talk about the fear of the fear of failure, the fear of success, the fear of spiders, right? The fear of the darkness, the fear of the unknown. But I believe they map the two major fears. And when you can when you can grasp these two major fears in life, you, you really have the golden ticket. And it's the fear of change, and it's the fear of what other people think. And when you can really uh, master those, and I think one of the things that you guys are able to do is just get up there, do your thing, and just let it go. And, and that's that's a huge um, gift that you can share with other people on how you can do that because public speaking creates such a uh, powerful self-image. So what would you say from the first time you were on stage to now? Well, I don't really necessarily think it was the on stage part okay. that made me nervous. We also have an interview portion. Oh, yeah. did that make you more nervous that on the stage? That actually did make me more That's nervous That's interesting. Why? On the stage. Why? I think it's because stand up behind this podium okay. and then we have like six or seven judges sitting down okay. and I think this level difference might have made it more more pressure on myself mm -hmm. but I think this last time that I competed I wasn't trying to make myself perfect I wasn't trying to be like okay what like what are they going to ask me what what kind of questions should I prepare myself for I was just like okay this is the last time <laughs> yeah. that it possibly be for me able to be to do it. Yeah, yeah, to be able to do it. So I was like, I'm just gonna go in there and give them who I am. I I can't change who I am. Right. So, right, and that and that probably made you more relaxed mm -hmm. because because you're not trying to be perfect. You're not trying to worry about what you're saying, how you're standing. Yeah. Just be you. Just be you. And and look what happened. Now you have the crown. Yeah, I do. <laughs> That's awesome. I love it. So, so from the first time you were on stage to or speaking, right, yes. to now, what what's the evolution, or was there? Well, the first time I was on stage was probably for like a play or something, okay. and the last time was for the pageant. Okay. So when I go up to do a play, I get really nervous, and I'm like, I'm gonna forget all my lines. <laughs> <laughs> but for the pageant, I kind of have had like a mindset like I'm not only doing this for myself; I'm doing it for other people. Like I'm trying to motivate other. people. So you were so, tying into your why. Yeah, I had to like, I was like, I'm going to be confident out there and I'm going to bring home the crown. Like, I'm going to do everything that I can because it's not just for me. It's not me being selfish. It's me trying to help these girls that I'm mentoring and talk to and just all these people that knew what I was going to do. Like, I wanted mm -hmm. to do it for them. Right, right. I see, I, I, I love that because, again, you're tying into your why and, and every one of you ladies have a strong enough why to pull you through. And, uh, and again, you're living proof that you can just do it. Just just go do it. Don't worry about being perfect. Mm -hmm. Just be you, right? Mm -hmm. And when you worry about being perfect, that's when you that's when you're struggling. Okay. Once you become you, mm -hmm. right? Um, yourself. Just just let it go. And and either way, um, you know you're true to yourself. Mm -hmm. So you, so you can't lose. And I, I love that mindset. I know we had a few people jump on. So let's see who we have here. So we have uh, Robert Walsh. Uh, uh, just be contented in life. You know, she's right. I mean, it's about, again, about knowing who you are 
knowing what you want and, uh, and tying into your why. So I think you guys are um, living proof of this, and I love it. The stories are awesome, and I'm excited to see where you guys go from here. But here's what we're going to do. We end the show the same way every time. This is called the Monster Motivator TV. Now, I'm a big believer that you can only be in one state of mind at a time. Right? So if you're in victim state, at that moment, there's absolutely no room for gratitude. Would you agree? Is that true? Yeah? Okay. So if you can get in that unstoppable state, majority of your day, how would that feel? Good. Would that feel good? Mm-hmm. Yeah? You need some energy. Would that feel good? Yeah. yeah. All right, all right. So, and I always say life asks you questions, life gives you options, and life says to you girls right now, if you could, now, now you might you might give us a different answer. If you could purr like a kitten or roar like a lion, what would you do? Lion. Lion? Mm-hmm. Is it right across the board? Four, five and oh, lion? Yeah. All right. So we're going to take this out monster motivator style. Let me show you how we do this. And it's called the monster motivator roar. And the sound is, that's right, out of girl. Uh-oh. And the sound is just as important as the pose. And this is what it's going to look like. You ready? We're going to go, ah, on three. One, two, three. Ah! Out of girl. Good job. Way to bring it. All right. So, guys, when we reshare this, You girls are going to be able to jump on Dave Daly, Monster Motivator, Facebook. You're going to be able to re-communicate with everyone, post all your stuff that you want them to know about, and reconnect. So I want to thank you girls for taking the time, and it was awesome, and uh, awesome, awesome Rocky stories. Love it. Thank Thank you. Thank you.